So, hello everybody, I'm Luis Felipe Artigas and I'm going to present to you a work that is not in the DeVos but in another project. It's called the Holistic Assessment of Plantal Diversity under the Marine Treatery Framework Directive. In order to define plantal indicators of our good environment among states, in our regions, and these are the colleagues mainly responsible for the work, that their own booths and it's a house, and etc. I'm going to present the, the participant uh, after. So the ecosystem approach for our regional habitat assessment is an H920 project uh, based on the idea of some gaps and need to better integration of regional and local scale and a combination of methods for holistic assessment of plankton community state. And then we advance in developing these indicators from essentially three regions of the OSPAR, uh, the OSPAR convention and only also to develop the eco-hydrodynamic regions uh, in order to have a, a, a better application of these indicators and to then to open and to compare with Baltic and also Mediterranean work. So the work packages are here, we are focused for pelagic habitats, I'm going to talk about, and essentially three indicators. First of all, pH1 in functional levels, changes of plankton functional type, pH2 community level, biomass and abundance, and pH3 devoted to diversity levels and changes in biodiversity index. So for that, the data provided come from different regions, as you see, uh, more, more available for phytoplankton in, in green and less for zooplankton, unfortunately, and uh, for fixed stations and also uh, essentially also for CPR continuous recorded in outer, in outer shelf and ocean systems. So the pH1 is a, based on functional groups, so we take pairs of functional, uh, of functional part of the community, competitive primary producers, secondary producers, also sometimes life stages, and then an information like ecosystem structure, energy flow, and avoid problem of incorrect taxonomic identification. And the idea is based on the work of Paul Ted et al. So uh, based on this uh, donut, there is a one, one state variable uh, compared to the other. <coughs> so you can follow the seasonal uh, succession and then transfer baseline regime, a reference period, and the proportion of points out of the regime defined in baseline or static conditions. So then you can see in the upper right, diatom and dinoflagellates as a couple uh, of uh, life form or, or functional groups. The interannual variability, so the reference period to taken, 2004, 2008, the, the, the donut from there, and the PI index, the proportion of points out of this uh, regime. The second indicator is the biomass and abundance, the state indicator, so the strength of yearly anomalies for primary producers and secondary consumers. This is a choice of these ones. Important changes might have most likely repercussions on the other trophic levels, of course. And the strength of anomalies can indicate a pressure that had potentially led to this change. So this is how it works, the methodology, so the decomposition of time series to calculate monthly and year anomalies on the left and from raw data to the anomalies. And then you can project here, for example, in one stratified waters of the North Sea. So the pH2 zooplankton, and for example, try to identify big anomalies for, for example, regime ships. And then how we present that in terms of, of policy, for policy makers. So here, a potential way is to have this color code with small changes important changes or extreme changes based mainly on the percentage consideration. And uh, we did the same work also with phytoplankton, and then we have a comparison between phytoplankton and zooplankton during the same years, uh, this uh, biomass and abundance. And then, of course, we need to define a categorization. So here you can see the L4 station, this is a fixed station before we have CPR data. And now we need to interpret the results in relation to environmental variables and pressures. The last one, but not least, is the pH3, the diversity indicator. So we uh, made a big exploration about all the indices that are available. And so we defined the comparison between one uh, richness index, the Manning Hick, and the Halbert dominance index. And to compare, for example, this is a seasonal variability in, in five stations. And then, after describing this uh, biodiversity, comparing assemblages, go, moving to the beta diversity, and mainly using the local contributions to beta diversity that reflects the uniqueness of a sampling unit and a typical, disturbed, I don't know, sampling units that can be, in this case, going to be time. 
So if we follow, for example, this station uh, in, in the south bay of Biscay, we put the yellow station, you can see the menehemic uh, index of richness, the dominance, and then of course the opposite of one, high dominance, low richness, and then high LCBD, local contribution to beta diversity. We need long-term series and the next steps to continue and combine the methods of the data we have, so we have used mainly taxonomic data for microscopy cell counts, and then to move to more ataxonomic data, but interesting in terms of functionality, flow geometry, pigment analysis, genetic data, of course, and also phylogenetic data that is useful when little is known about the traits. What else now, according to the work on these indicators, the aggregation, of course, combining a comparable information from an indicator or an MSAT criterion across temporal and spatial scales. So, for example, all the functional uh, couples combination, and these are the challenges we need to, to face. And then the other way also important is the integration, so the combination of the information from different indicators. And uh, this, of course, needs conceptual ecological links between, for example, the three indicators presented here, functional groups, biomass abundance, and biodiversity, and also the integration, very important, because we talked about that before, with food web, food webs and processes. So the cross-linking platform indicators to better define the good environmental state. So then we have different levels of organization that were used here, the structure and function, for in order to reduce the uncertainty, sorry, in the assessment, the combination of complementary information, and to understand of this, so that's the work that has been carried out by the different uh, institutions that are here in collaboration with other ones. This project was funded by the H2020 grant, and if you need uh, more information, not hesitate in contact. Thank you.